Welcome back, my name is Benji. Today I want to welcome you to the final episode of our Jiro play from on Pro Cycling Manager. I'm not as sad as yesterday anymore. PCM doesn't define my mood, luckily. But we're gonna be doing the time trial, the final one, 293 kilometers from Sinago to Milano. In GC, we can't move. We're 2 minutes 56 behind Bernal, 11, 18 behind, well, that, that's Bardet. He's too far behind to actually pass us still. So I think that we're gonna try our best to do a decent time trial with our team, but... I think the majority of this episode will be looking at the results overall and just reviewing our, our Giro because I'm actually quite happy with how it went despite the uh, unfortunate events happening in the final episode we just had yesterday. While the other riders are going out of the starting ramp here, I want to talk about Pro Cycling Manager 2021 because that's releasing on June 3rd next week. I played it yesterday for the first time. I received a review key to make a first impressions video of and the same with the Tour de France games. I um, wanted to share my opinion on it beforehand, though. I didn't sign an NDA or anything, so I'm allowed to talk about it to the best of my capabilities. But I won't be going in-depth into the features because I feel like that would be unfair because no other YouTuber or content creator has made content about that yet. Hence, uh, I want to try and keep it somewhat fair for them as well. But in all honesty, I feel like um, I want to say that the Steam description of the game is inaccurate and incomplete. So... Do not buy the game before you know what's in the game. That's logical. You don't buy a car if you don't know which car it is, you know? That's that's the same opinion. Just don't pre-order it until you know what's in the game and decide when you see a video review of one of your uh, desired YouTubers, whether it's Tim Soski, me, Black War, Stios, uh, Kill Rob, Carreras, for example, LM Cycling, all those PCM YouTubers these days. I think that you need to watch the content first and then decide based on that. Because otherwise, yeah, you're buying a product that you don't know what is in it. And that's not entirely uh, so fun all the time. It sometimes disappoints. I guess uh, we're going to try and do a decent time trial here with, I think, Sanchez and Sobrero. I forgot who else is good at DT. Is it Gire, perhaps? Fellini a tiny bit? I guess we'll see. Bronski's off. My boy. I don't think this time trial is going to be too well for him. But I'm going to use him to try and figure out what effort I should spend on my actually good time trialists. And I wanted to talk about the fact that he was really good in real life the last week because on the uh, up in Mata stage in the actual Giro, he uh, wrote a very good result. I think 14 for 13 on the stage, which is kind of crazy for this man. He definitely deserves a bit of an up in terms of his recovery stat, that's for sure. Oh, we're not going to take over Pelo. Ah, so close, so close yet so far. Bronski's going to finish. On a 35th spot, which is not actually too bad, I guess. Matteo Sobrero, 75 jump trial. We've got a flat side on as well. This should go fine, as it is a uh, completely flat jump trial. Sobrero's off. I'm going to put him on 74 for now. I'm going to try and keep that up for a bit, and we'll see after the second time check if we need to up it or lower it a bit. Talking about time checks, number one is here. We've got 20 second on 24 seconds. That's actually pretty good. I don't care about Baristella. He's horrendous at time trial anyway. It's about to happen. We're gonna pass Davide Villella. And uh, I think I'm gonna up it to 75 for a tiny bit. Because I think we've got enough energy to do so. Second time check coming in in a tiny bit here. And our time is going to be 15 on 57 seconds. We're upping. We might be able to get into the top 20 by the end of the stage. I sincerely hope it's a better. That would be nice. I'm afraid I spent a bit too much in the final three kilometers. We're now on 71. 70, yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Because, like, my yellow's done. Let's go 99. We're going to finish 15th on a minute 37. I think if I played it better in the last portion, I wouldn't have had that issue because the Movistar Rider actually came back towards us in the final few kilometers. Feline is off. He's got 73 time trial himself. Looking good on the day as well. Great secondary, so that might help out. I put the other guy on 75. I think 74 might be better, or even 73 on Feline, perhaps? We can up the tempo in the end instead of trying to lower it, you know? I'll do this for now. Our yellow bar is now almost larger than the other bar, so I'm going to up it to 75 again, otherwise we're going to have too much energy left by the end. We're 41st on the first time check, so not amazing. I think I just negative split it a bit. I went for a worse time at the start in the hopes that I can spend more energy towards the end of this time trial. And we were 25th on the second time check, minute and seven down. It's going to be worse than Sobrero, I think, unless we really went well with our energy expenditure. I think 76, perhaps. I might even go that far. Going into the final kilometer with 
yellow left, so that's better than your boy Sobrero. I think this is going to be a better time than Sobrero. Sobrero out of the top 20, by the way. That's a bummer. And we're going to be finishing 19. That's not going to stay there. No, 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 no. We ain't staying there. 30 fast, 23 seconds. That's actually pretty good. Okay, looking forward to see what Izagiri can do there and what Sanchez can do at the next one. Izagiri crosses the line and has 46. That's not great. Now Sanchez time again. Please, a better time than earlier. 25th. And now I can up it towards like 77 because we've got plenty of yellow left on Luis Leon for this final section. It's a bit of a test, you know. I want to try that. He's almost near Guerrero. We're going to finish. Well, not finishing, but... 32nd with him, 1 minute and 5 down, Flazov's about to start, let's up him towards, I don't know, 73 or something, and then Sanchez can try and finish this off, but not on the tempo that he's doing, let's do 74 instead, and hope that this works out, oh, I think that might be a bit too much, ah, it's gonna be good, I think it's gonna be perfect, in the last kilometer, gonna up it towards, nah, 74 is fine, perfect spendage on the line, let's up it now, there we go, Fourth, 26 seconds down. What a time trial by Sanchez. Holy crap. That might become a top 10 in the end. Let's hope it's a top 5, but I doubt it. Although I don't know who would be able to beat them. Even in the pool and Almeida, perhaps. Yeah, I think top 10 is most likely. Let's up it towards 80 on Izagiri because he's got way too much yellow left. And otherwise we won't make it with that. I hope that Izagiri can also do a good TT here. Izagiri is going to cross the line, and 11th. Like, it seems to work really well if we negative split the first time check and then go hard on the final one. So I'm going to bring that to an extreme with Vlazov. I'm going to go relatively slow on the first section. 71 time trial on day, so this is not going to be a banger anyway. But if we can do the same kind of tactic with it with Izagiri, and Sanchez, we might be able to do a decent time trial and get oh, within two minutes of Bernal and GC. Oh, I doubt it. Severely doubt it. Two time checks in. We've lost a lot of time. Let's up it towards 77 now, just like I did with Sanchez. Come on, Flazov. The negative splitting is working. I'm actually going to have to go even faster, like 85 in the final kilometer, perhaps. With Flazov, otherwise my yellow won't be spent. There we go. Hammering it hard in the final. Okay, come on, Flazov. Come on, Flazov. 99 to the line. And we're going to get 34th on 1 minute 15. Bernal is going to do a similar time, I'm afraid. 130, 140. I think we're going to get onto like 220 in GC, probably. Not too much better than that. And it is 133, yes. But Amy Cavanaugh wins the time trial ahead of Ghana. Even a pool, Carfi. <laughs> Carfi up there, okay. So once again, in fifth. When it comes to the Malia Rosa, the Giro is won by Egan Bernal. Colombia is happy. But Russia as well with a podium. KOM is ours. Yes, the one jersey we won eventually. Really sad that we had like everything lined up for Vlasov to take it on the final mountain stage. And it got taken away from us by the game. Egan Bernal is taking it by two points. <laughs> Come on. Aww. And he's also taking the white jersey, obviously. Almeida and Evenepoel doing third and fourth. But we win the most important classification ever. At least that's how it works, right? The team that wins it finds it the most important one after winning it. And if they don't win it, it's the useless one. In the end, the top 10 for Sanchez, which I like. Really good result. And I guess that's about it for this stage. And honestly, the Giro, a really fun parkour we did. I think we won, I think, five stages in total, which... It's a lot considering we didn't win anything before stage uh, 12, I think. So, yeah, that turned around a lot in the last portion. That's always what happens with a Tour de France or Giro or Velta series I do. Because I start off doing bad stuff because it's like been ages since I played PCM. Then I get into the grind again and by the end I've got multiple stage wins. And we're doing this on extreme difficulty, so I'm happy about those wins. Although that I feel like a lot of the wins are sometimes a bit... The AI just bugging out a tiny bit and then I have to like be happy because I'm on the stage but I'm kind of frustrated that it's the game that basically bugged me to a victory and it's not my ability to play the game. But anyway, we're gonna take the details and the uh, the small victories as well. But uh, second in the Giro, happy about it. It could have gone much worse but what an atrocity to stop then. 32 minutes down is the 10th spot. The third spot, 11 minutes and 49 seconds. 
it's a massacre. Like, it's crazy how Bernal and Vlasov were so close together for the entire portion. In the end, I basically really enjoyed it. So there's nothing more I ask of this. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'm probably going to have a similar series for the Tour de France coming up in a month and a half. But also some other content coming up because, yeah, the two new games are coming out next week. Gotta make first impressions of that on June 2nd. Check that out once it's out because then you can decide whether you want the game yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching this series. Thanks for the support on it. It's been an absolute blast on my end. I hope on your end as well. And I guess I'll see you for the next one. Goodbye.